Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In this video, we're going to be discussing Severus Snape, Harry Potter, and the Sword of Godric Gryffindor. The Sword of Gryffindor was an ancient sword, over a thousand years old. It was goblin made, and originally belonged to Godric Gryffindor, one of the four founders of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Coated in Basilisk's venom, the sword was the perfect tool for the trio to go out and destroy some Horcruxes. But first, Harry had to find it. Harry was of course first presented with the sword when he was fighting the Basilisk in the Chamber of Secrets. The sword materialized inside of the sorting hat and appeared in front of Harry, allowing him to defeat the Basilisk and save Ginny. The sword was originally in Dumbledore's possession, and before he died, he entrusted the sword to Harry in his will. Unfortunately, however, Rufus Scrimger, the current Minister for Magic, refused to give it to Harry, as he felt that it was not Dumbledore's to give away. Rufus took the sword to the Ministry for examination, but did eventually return it to Dumbledore's office. Once it was returned, members of Dumbledore's army attempted to steal it, but were caught. At this point in time, Snape passed on a counterfeit version of the sword to Bellatrix, who stored it in her Gringotts vault. Snape kept the real sword in his own possession. In the Deathly Hallows, Harry and the trio are out hunting Horcruxes, and Harry knows that he needs to find the sword. When it's discovered where Harry, Ron, and Hermione are camping out, Dumbledore instructs Snape to give Harry the real sword. However, he also explains to Snape that Harry mustn't know that it was him who presented him with the sword. This is because Voldemort could potentially use legitimacy on Harry and figure out Snape's true allegiance. So instead of just giving Harry the sword, he puts it in a frozen lake in the Forest of Dean. He then uses his corporeal Patronus to guide Harry to the sword. But why would Snape leave the sword in a frozen lake? Isn't that dangerous? The water was cold enough that Harry could have gotten hypothermia. So why the added risk? Why make it so hard to retrieve? We later find out that there was a necessity for Harry to retrieve the sword under dangerous circumstances, in an act of bravery. In Snape's memory at the end of the book, we see Dumbledore explain this to him. Good, very good, cried the portrait of Dumbledore behind the headmaster's chair. Now, Severus, the sword, do not forget that it must be taken under conditions of need and valor, and he must not know that you give it. If Voldemort should read Harry's mind and see you acting for him, it's hard to say what would happen if the sword was just easily obtained, as this is never clearly explained, but my theory is that it would perhaps just return to the sorting hat. When Harry arrives at the lake, the text suggests that Harry is aware of the bravery component when obtaining the sword. What was it? Harry asked himself, walking again. That Dumbledore had told him the last time he had retrieved the sword, only a true Gryffindor could have pulled that out of the hat. And what were the qualities that defined a Gryffindor? A small voice inside Harry's head answered him, their daring, nerve, and chivalry set Gryffindors apart. Harry stopped walking and let out a long sigh, his smoky breath dispersing rapidly upon the frozen air. He knew what he had to do. If he was honest with himself, he had thought it might come to this from the moment he had spotted the sword through the ice. And that's pretty much why the sword was hidden in an icy lake. Sure, Snape probably could have been a little bit more inventive, but this was quick, easy, and he would have been able to save Harry had things gone awry. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, leave your video suggestions down below. Until next time, you're a wizard, Harry. <laughs>